In this video, I'm going to compare DeepSeq versus Claude inside of Claude Code. That's right, you can actually run other LLMs inside Claude Code as long as those LLMs use the Anthropic API spec. And it just so happens that DeepSeq does. And really, the goal of this is to see if we run the same prompt and we build the same project inside of Claude Code using the DeepSeq LLM versus the Claude Sonnet. API, what is the difference in cost, the speed, and the quality of the output? And so I already have a DeepSeq account already set up. I've got an API key and I've already put in my billing information and I have a small balance here. And so to get started here, I'm going to open up a terminal. I have a directory here called Deep versus Claude. And I'm going to make another directory for each project, Deep Seek and Claude. And now for DeepSeq, I'm going to enter this directory and I have already created my API key. So you'll have to create that. And there's this simple bash script that you'll need to run. And I'll explain this in just a second. I'm going to copy this, jump into VS Code, close out this project and open up DeepSeq. And I'm just going to create a new file, paste this in here, save it. We'll call it DeepSeq. SH. And essentially all we're doing here is we're setting up some variables that Claude code looks at in order to define which LLM it's going to use. And again, as long as you're using an LLM with an Anthropic API spec, this should work. Most of them do use the OpenAI spec, but DeepSeq decided to use Anthropic. So you have to put in your authentication token, your base URL, the model, and the small fast model. And then we're exporting these variables so that when we run Claude code, it will be able to access these variables. So I'm going to come here and just add a bit more funding to my account just in case we go over. All right, so now I've got a larger balance here. And now if I come back to the terminal and I do an ls, we should see our deepseek.sh file. And now all I need to do is type source and deepseek.sh. And what that's going to do is now if I do an export, it's going to show me all the variables that are set for this particular session. And now we can see that we have our anthropic environment variables here. So now if I type Claude, it's going to open up Claude code. We're going to give a permission to access this directory. And now we can see that the API is now using the DeepSeq Anthropic API LLM. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over, I'm going to run the same prompt on both Claude code and DeepSeq. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to copy this, come back to the terminal, I'm going to paste this here, and then I'm going to open up a new terminal, and we'll just collapse this a bit. And you might notice I'm just running Claude in the console instead of running it in VS code, which is fine for this example. So this time I'll go into DeepSeq versus Claude, and then I'll go into Claude, and then we'll just start up Claude code on its own without the environment variables. So now it's going to be using Claude. So if I do model, we can see that it's using the default model, currently Sonnet 4. Exit back out. And again, let's just take a look and see what it says if we do model here. You can see here it's using DeepSeq chat. All right, so we're ready to go. We can test both of these. I'm going to jump over to our prompt and we'll run the same prompt in both. First and foremost, I'm going to jump into plan mode for both of these just so we can see how that process works if there's any difference. Paste in the prompt. And what we're going to do here is just build out a basic SaaS framework and Next.js application. So we'll start this one off over here on DeepSeq, and then we'll paste this in over here. And we'll start this one using Claude code with Claude itself. And then I'm just going to monitor these. I'm always going to give permission to each model. All right, so it looks like Claude Code came back with its plan quite a bit faster. So let's take a look at the difference between the plans. It looks like Claude Code came up with nine different phases, and it looks like DeepSeq came up with four different phases. Let's go ahead and auto accept both. Now they should both start to build out this landing page. While those build, I'm going to just jump over here and see if we're starting to see some charges coming through on DeepSeq. Yep, we start to see some charges coming through. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It tells me what type of content you want more of. So at each stage here, I'm just going to give permission to the LLM to proceed and be able to run these commands the next time. We'll continue to allow it to move forward, continue to auto accept. They both seem to be working on Shad CN right now. It's pretty interesting to see both of these moving along at the same time, just to kind of see where they are. It will be interesting to see which one finishes first and how many errors there are. Then checking over on DeepSeek right now, looks like we've spent about three cents. I'll be able to check the cost in Claude code using the Claude models at the end by doing a slash cost. So over here on DeepSeq right now, it's working on the global.css file. I believe that I saw that being built on Claude quite a bit earlier. So it looks like Claude is running a bit faster, but we'll see when it actually finishes. 
and how complete it is and how many errors there are. So it looks like DeepSeek is working on the hero section and Claude Code with Claude did that just a bit earlier up here. Although it doesn't mean that they're always doing things in the same order. All right, it looks like Claude Code is getting to the build stage now. So it's starting to build things out so we can actually test this and see what it looks like. Whereas DeepSeek is still working on some of the main pages and the layout. So it's getting a few errors and it's working through those and fixing them. And I'm telling it to use port 3001 because over here with Claude Code and the Claude model, it's gonna run on port 3000, so. Now I'm not exactly sure why it stopped. Every once in a while that happens even in Claude code with the Claude models as well, but we'll just keep it going. All right, let's take a look. Interesting, this doesn't look very good on the Claude code side, and it looks like the DeepSeek might have stopped. All right, so Claude code thinks it's done. Let's take a look and see where we're at with the site. All right, so here we are, nice. So here's Claude code and the final output. Build, scale, and grow your business. And it looks like they put in the light dark mode. Okay, cool. So that took about 25 minutes or so. And let's check out the pricing on Claude Code. So it looks like we spent about $3.12 to build that out. Now keep in mind, I'm using the direct API for both of these, not necessarily Claude's so-called unlimited plan, which isn't really unlimited because it's really hard to tell how much you really get out of that. So I'm just comparing the API directly to the API with DeepSeek. Let's see how much we've spent so far today with DeepSeek, about 11 cents. So, so far quite a bit cheaper. Now I've noticed it's been stuck on this here. So it does seem to be working. It's just a little bit slower than Claude Code is. All right, so it seems to be getting through on the various sections here. Now it's moving on to the light and dark mode feature that we added. The light and dark mode is a part of the Next.js themes. So it's pretty standard, but you still have to add it in. Let's see if it remembers that we told it to use port 3001 and it is. So now we're here building the site, permission to build. So it's finished and now it's gonna run the development server on port 3001 as instructed. Give it permission to run. And just so you know, one thing that's interesting about Claude code here is that you can see there is one background task running. And if you hit the down arrow key, you can access that and click enter and it will actually show you what's running. All right, so let's go take a look at the new site. So here was the one from Claude Code and here's the one from Claude Code running the DeepSeek LLM. So it's interesting to see how they both interpreted the same prompt. You can actually look at them side by side. Pretty similar, everything you need to succeed. They made some slight different choices. You can notice that there's these elements here, testimonials. Now you can see they both made this mistake here with the most popular option being hidden here. Some artifacts here that are missing, but both of them did pretty well and look very similar. And now if we jump back to the terminal here, I'm gonna type cost. It's not gonna be able to give me a true cost because it's gonna be inaccurate because it's not really using the Anthropic API. But it looks like our total time here was 37 minutes and our total time here was 24 minutes. So Cloud Code was definitely a lot faster. Cost us $3.12. And then let's take a look at DeepSeek and see how much we've spent. Looks like we spent about 25 cents. So it was definitely a lot slower, but the output was on par and significantly cheaper. So it was almost $3 cheaper. All right, so here's the final conclusions that we had. It was $3.12 for Cloud Code Sonnet and 26 cents for DeepSeek. Seek. So Sonnet was about 12 times more expensive. DeepSeek took about 1.54 times longer to do the build, 37 minutes versus 24 minutes. And then if we look at the output, which is a little bit more subjective, remember Claude did have some initial boot up errors. If we were looking at the initial setup when we loaded the site, it wasn't complete. And so it had to do some fixes there and get that going. When we were working with DeepSeek in Claude code on this side, it seemed to get stuck a couple times, but I've had that happen in Claude code as well. And it may have been working. It just wasn't visually showing it here. And so I had to prompt it a couple times to get it going, but it, it did finish on its own and it might've been working on its own anyway. I just, it was hard to tell. In reality, the output of both of them was pretty good and they looked fairly similar. They both took a little bit of a different approach to different things. They both messed up in the same area with this most popular. And then DeepSeek seemed to have some small issues related to the buttons and some formatting, nothing major. And the same goes for Claude Code. So overall, I would say the output is pretty much very similar. So when you look at that, DeepSeek is actually a pretty compelling option here, especially if you're going to use DeepSeek for more automated building. If you've seen some of my other videos, I'm starting to build out quite a bit of automation in GitHub for automatically doing security reviews and doing bug fixes. 
I think that DeepSeek would be a great option for just some of that automated building. And then if you're building out specific features and time is of essence, then of course you can use Sonnet and do things quite a bit faster, but you're definitely going to pay for that. And if cost is a major factor, DeepSeek and Cloud Code might be a very viable option for a lot of developers. Because if you think about we just built out the site. So that was just the site build out. And that cost $3.12 versus 26 cents. So that's a pretty substantial difference in the cost. Now, if you're interested in working with a bunch of other startup entrepreneurs building out their SaaS products, make sure to jump into the Vibe Encoders community. Inside the classroom, we have an entire course on building out your own SaaS. We go in depth on how to get started, cloud code MCPs, how to use Git. And there's a SaaS framework that you can use to just install and skip all of the steps that we just went through today. And that SaaS framework includes authentication with email and Google and Stripe integration. And then I have videos on how I built that whole thing out. So not only do you get the SaaS framework, but you also see how I actually built that, which is gonna be vital in terms of being able to navigate your Vibe coding projects successfully. We also have support calls on Wednesday and a networking call on Friday. But more than that, it's just a great group of supportive people all working together on their projects. I'd love to see you inside the community. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out more videos that are coming. I'm going deep into cloud code and automation and how to optimize your coding workflow. I'll see you on the next video.